Uh-oh. Hey, everybody. All right. How about that intro? <laughs> Welcome, <laughs> Phantasma Soldiers. My name is Dr. Funk. I'm your host with the ghost. Joining me is the is the Dumbledore uh, to Phantasma's Hogwarts. It's it's Joao Tech, a.k.a. Tech. Yeah. What's hey, up, everyone. Man? Hey, nice dog. To have you. Nice to have you on the show. This is, of course, as you can as you heard, the uh, state of the chain address. Uh, where we're going to update you on all the cool stuff that's going on, talk a little bit about the audit, and some extra special stuff, uh, next steps, things like that coming coming down the road. So, um, before we begin, how excited are you, sir, that, um, as you can see on the, the ticker below, yeah. we, have our, we have our outbound CEX um, connections restored again. Everyone's trading. Everyone's swapping, doing their thing. Finally, finally, finally we're right? those. Yeah, it's, finally. it's been a, it's been a long road, and uh, somewhat arduous, but uh, we're really super happy that now we can. I think we can pretty much say the chain is reactivated. Right, we are back live. Right, Ki yeah, kicking. Now it's time to kick the tires and light the fires, as they say, in. Uh, you know, when they take off on the aircraft carrier, I say, get yeah. the tires and light the <laughs> fires. And uh, yeah, and now it's time. And now it's time for ecosystem growth. Right. We couldn't be happier. We're, we're finally at, at that point where, you know, it's one of those things where we're just going to pick up where we left off. The business development team has been working hard on getting some strategic partnerships going. We're we're talking with our um, our prior uh, ecosystem partners who had been developing on the chain. Things are going smoothly there, and we're always looking for fresh new things to, um, to to bring to Phantasma. In fact, I'll be going to ETH Denver today, right after I record this interview, and I hope to uh, find some more cool strategic tech partners that we can integrate into the, the chain. So it's going to be really, really cool. All right. Without further ado, sir, uh, let me get back to the report okay so let's dig in so there are we had our audit done we got a great score by hacking right uh you know there's some things on the audit if you're not technically minded that you might wonder what does this mean or what does that mean and so what i wanted to do here is just kind of briefly run through it talk about a few key points talk about what we're doing um you know uh, of course there are several issues on there, but you'll see that they all say fixed, which is very nice. But we're going to talk about a few key ones there and, and what those mean and, and, and why they're important. So let's go ahead and, and dive into it. The Hacken Phantasma Security Analysis Report. So this is the first L1 audit that Hacken's done. And, you know, and that's and we'll scroll down here. And, you know, it, it took a while. Right. It took a while. But the reasoning while, for indeed. that is the reasoning for that is you've got a hundred and fifty three thousand lines of code to look through, and that is no small feat. Um, the standard smart contract ERC twenty token audit might happen really yeah. fast. That's you know this is it's a walk in the park. Sure. Yeah, like uh, from a small, I think a small, like normal smart contract in terms of Ethereum, it would be like two to two hundred. No, sorry, two thousand lines of code. Right. So, not right. not so, really <laughs> comparison in terms of line not as coding. not quite as beefy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we yeah. piled <laughs> extra meat on this sandwich, right? <laughs> so, it it is what it is. And, it, and being that this is not an EVM chain, you know, Hacken had to take longer to do better due diligence, to dive in deeper, because our compiler is written yeah. on C-sharp. So they had to make new tests uh, to, to run. They had to, to, had to go in deeper, and it took a little while longer. But the result, as we all know, is a stellar 8.8.0. 8.0 8. <laughs> 8, 8. Yeah, 8. 8. 8. total score <laughs> right so yeah. sorry my brain my brain had a moment there 
Um, so okay. just going through here. Yeah, going through here. We'll just go through a couple of the, of, of the important things. We've got the documentation quality, a 7 out of 10. Not bad, but we want to make sure that everybody knows that we are making a, a concerted effort to expand continually the documentation, right, Tech? Yeah, yeah. We right now, since we are on a good state in terms of, of the chain, of course, we will keep improving it and making adjust, adjustments, enhancements, uh, of course, always security enhancements and stability to the chain. But we will start focusing on the documentation, improving it and bringing it out and making sure that new developers will will come in and will give them will give them the tools to to build with us and documentation is really an entry point for newcomers and that's the next focus alongside of other other things that we need to take care but this right. is really one of our priorities yeah we're kind of yeah. we're kind of building this out in parallel with the other high high priority items right as we go yeah. along and then and then also we'll be doing a series of shorts um with you uh as we yeah. kind of explain features of the chain uh make the developer the early developer journey a little easier we'll be doing some like video shorts showing people how to just even just use use and download the wallets things yeah, like that right that's the only... plan yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan for for newcomers for a uh, simple simple entry to the blockchain. But I will also do uh, YouTube tutorials uh, from. In, I will call it. Uh, it it will be a tutorial series that I will call it from zero to hero um, for, on the Phantasma blockchain. Yeah, uh, I will make sure that I will try to cover. Uh, every possible scenario from not knowing what a smart contract is to deploying a, a Phantasma DAP. Not a Phantasma DAP, but a DAP, a smart contract, a token, everything. You'll yeah, be able yeah. to do everything. Yeah. That's so I want to <laughs> highlight, yeah, I want to highlight here something that I don't, I mean, I hope it's okay to share. When you entered the Phantasma ecosystem, you were just a game developer, right? Yeah. You were not a blockchain and developer. I, not even close. I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't in blockchain at all. <laughs> right. Right. Fun fact. But but <laughs> but you sat down. You looked at the you looked at the code base, and of course, you know, yeah. with with help of Sergio and things like that, you've become now at this point our head honcho um, out there yeah. out there uh, working the keyboard. So it just goes to show you that for. Game develop was it? Do you think that? Do you think that because the compiler is in C sharp that it was an easier road for you as a game developer? Because I know a lot of game devs they they run on like C stack or C sharp and Unity stacks and things like that. Did it make more sense, or was it just that it was an object oriented language and and that you know you could make the connections? Yeah, I have a lot of background as well, but uh, being a C sharp a C sharp language it certainly helped because I work uh, with C-sharp a lot. Uh, and the compiler is in C-sharp, but the language you, you write is not in C-sharp. It's a right. custom language ca called Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. It's like C-sharp, but with some tweaks, uh, some special special things to mm -hmm. make it easier and not, not C-sharp heavy. Uh, right. And it compiles to assembly code to be fast, and you you deploy that code to the to the to the Phantasma chain to to deploy your smart contract. Right. Um, and yeah, it was it was easy, uh, but at the same time difficult because there wasn't a lot of documentation on 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 Tom. But yeah, yeah uh, right now cool. I think. Uh, the improvements that we will be making to to the to the smart contract language that we have will for sure help newcomers, and we will try to make it as easier as possible. And yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. And you can also, I think, some of the other scripting languages are P, uh, what PHP, Python, and and JavaScript. Is that correct? Uh, there's mistaken? more. There. No, no, okay. no, no. Yeah, there's more. Uh, but 
yeah uh like for example in other chains you probably will use solidity to to build your smart right. contracts we will also and we are also uh making an effort to to bring solidity language to tomb okay so Excellent. you can program uh in solidity and compile it with tom to deploy on the phantasma uh that's chain. great news that's great news yeah. i know a lot of people will be happy <laughs> to see that especially people that want to dip their toes into this ecosystem so that's great so uh just moving on down uh we have the code quality is 7.6 out of 10 um we have architecture 7.0 out of 10 but and then the really important one here is the security score we had a, a beautiful 8.5 out of 10 and this is uh we couldn't have asked for more there of course security That's is true. always an, an ongoing effort right uh we will true. continue to always work on uh look at our security and and make sure that going forward that it is good. Now we're, we're getting into some of the the issues, but I do want to I, I do want to note that on all of these, these are issues that were uh, put out during the first draft uh, that that Hacken sent us, and then on the final, we that you'll see that they all say fixed. So as you look through this, you know, make sure to note that. But this, a couple of the ones that I wanted to, I mean, you. It really get into here yeah. um, people might want to know what does low code test coverage mean because it pops up a couple times in in the in the, in report. the report yeah so i think this is important to talk about what that entails okay so basically test coverage means that uh, our code wasn't being tested enough so like uh we have a bunch of lines of code uh, as you mm -hmm. could so, could saw it yeah. uh, at the beginning of the document, like a lot, and I think we we still are still increasing the lines of code. But uh, if you if you want to have a secure code that you you know the um, the the path that the code will take, you for, for that you need to make tests to test the code that you have to try to imagine every not every possible scenario, but uh, almost every scenario, you need to test every line of code for uh, better protection, security, and all of the things that you can imagine, like uh, performance as well. You need to test the code that you write so you are sure the, the code that you wrote uh, will perform what you want to perform. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you make a transaction, uh, that code should make a transaction and not make two transactions, right? And yeah. so tests, uh, tests are there for, for making it aut aut autonomous and automatically uh, to, to show us if anything, for example, anything goes wrong with the tests because we have automated the tests. Um, we know that uh, when, when a feature was added, something went wrong and we, we, we can go and fix it uh, right. as soon as possible. And yeah. It, it really helps because it helped us uh, like a month ago. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so we did increase our test coverage per the recommendation to about 80 or 85 percent. Right. So, yeah, um, where it was where it was significantly lower before. So that's really important stuff um, going forward here. I don't think there's a whole lot of really pertinent stuff. Lack of documentation, which, of course, we covered already. Um, there was one yeah. more that I did want to talk about. Uh, no compatible wallet. Ecto, of course, we know that is uh, that is fixed. And by the way, everyone, please make sure to always update your wallets. Uh, if you're on if you're on Poltergeist, make sure you're updating your wallet to the current version. Um, yeah. to make sure everything is is working correctly with the new chain code, especially with our um, restored outbound connections. I believe the other thing, where did it go? There was something. I know what you're looking for. I know, you know what I'm looking for too. <laughs> I think that it's that one up, up there, up there, up there. Did I miss it? Yes. That oh, yes. <laughs> yes. That's it right here. Right. Great. Yeah. So this that is one. kind of, this is kind <laughs> of, this is kind of worded a bit funky. And I want to point out because it says workaround, but it's not really a workaround. It is a fix. And of course, you know, when you're in crypto, everyone talks about your private key and keeping your private key 
private, <laughs> clearly. Yes. <Yeah, same. laughs> right? yeah. So this is a big thing. So they might wonder what plain text private key and key store file is because it sounds a lot worse than what it actually was. And the truth is that it wasn't necessarily part of Phantasmic's code where there's a problem. It was part of our consensus mechanism that we're using. Would you like to explain that a little bit? Okay, I will try. I will try to keep it simple. Uh, okay. I will try. It's hard. It's a really weird concept yeah. to talk about because, okay, so the Phantasmus chain, uh, we once we did the upgrade to the version 3, right? Mm -hmm. The version that we are currently on, uh, we upgraded the backbone of Phantasma chain. We added mm -hmm. a tender mint to make sure that we can have multiple nodes running at the same time They uh, mm -hmm. to have the consensus when producing a block and validating transactions and validating everything, uh, we implemented this technology to allow us to, to decentralize. Mm -hmm. And what the Tendermint does is basically, it's, a, it's almost a blockchain of itself that we use for the backbone to handle the, the, consensus, uh, the consensus in terms of validating transactions and blocks and keep it reliable uh, across all of the nodes that we that we have right. and we will have. Okay, I, I think uh, I, I try to explain because it's really hard. Okay, yeah, now. no, that, that's 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 good. So Tendermint is a is a consensus mechanism or a consensus software that's widely used yeah. in the blockchain community, right? And to to help yeah. with exactly that consensus. It's so, basically a, a blockchain. Basically, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, the blockchain that runs the blockchain. Yeah, in a way. Yep. Right. <laughs> so, the, but the problem was that by default, Tendermint stores a private key in plain text, and we had to create a system to fix that because clearly that's not something that you want <laughs> the public to be able to see, right? So we basically created a system where, for people who are running nodes and, and things like that to remove that plain text private key and kind of, you, you yeah. we talked about a little bit before, kind of make a cipher that's representative of, of yeah, that plain yeah, text. Yeah. Okay, I will go, I will go in, into detail. Okay, so what we, do, what we did and what we com came up with was uh, a system. Okay, you for sure need that file, encrypted mm -hmm. file. Uh, either it's encrypted, either it's not encrypted. Okay, so uh, we encrypt that file with, uh, with a hash, okay? So when you will, uh, that file will become something ciphered that no mm -hmm. one knows what, what, what's in there. Uh, yeah. Only when you decode it and for decoding it, you will need to have also another key. Uh, right. What we did is when you start to run the Tendermint, uh, when you start to run the Phantasma blockchain uh, alongside, the tender, alongside the Tendermint, uh, what we do is like we decode that into memory, then mm -hmm. we pass that file, uh, as you can see the example there on the report, mm -hmm. pass that to the Tendermint. It will uh, load the configuration with a private key address and so on. And then uh, what we do is uh, delete that file from memory mm -hmm. after the Tendermint starts. And then we don't have any any pointer to to that file, and that file will cease to exist. exist. So right. if let's let's say if the server goes down, the server goes down, that file is no longer in existence, so it won't start the node again because it has no reference to it. Okay, and it will make make it safer because the, there's no private key in public text in public text or either in an encrypted file because it was deleted. So mm -hmm. it's even safer than having the file, right? Right. That file. Right, exactly. Right. Okay, so, so sounds two good. Layers, so basically. Two, two, two <laughs> layers of security. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so it re-encrypts it. The password is QWERTY1234. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> For the, in the encryption. No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we wouldn't do that. We'll be fine. Yeah, we'll, we'll be, be good. Fun. Yeah. Okay. So everything else though is uh pretty self-explanatory. We've got some, you know, some low issues, but again, everything says fixed. Um it yeah. oh, what's this, sir? 
multi-sig verification <laughs> tech yeah Did we add a multi-sig function to the blockchain yeah we do have multi-signature uh we are we have been using it for the protocol upgrades and uh people will be able to use it and abuse it as they want they will be able to create contracts to use multi-signature uh alongside multi-sig we also added because that that was needed uh added the DAOs and usability to the DAOs. we will keep improving it uh but now you can create your DAO. you can multi-sig like do a transaction from the DAO, imagine that the DAO has some balances. You can move the, the funds of the DAO with a multi-signature transaction. Uh, you will be able to do a lot of things. We also have a new platform that it, it's been develop, in development for quite some time. Uh, it's the Phantasma Voting uh, that will allow you to manage the DAOs, do and participate in votes uh, for features, upcoming features. And all of these will come with multi multi signature, um, and yeah, it's part of the chain. You can try to use it. You will be able to do, and we we hope that you use it and abuse it because it's an awesome feature to have. Yeah, really. absolutely. So all of these things <laughs> are part of the move to make Phantasma more decentralized. And for those who don't know we actually have DAO a contract to form a DAO already in the repository. So, yeah. And we'll talk a little more about some advanced features and, and things like that as we wrap this up. But yeah, for those that don't know, we have DAO contracts in the repository already. I think that really sums it up on the, on the, um, on the report here. So we'll just, we'll just whisk that away. But one of the beautiful things before we segue, I know you want to show off kind of some of the stuff that you're working for, but before before we go there, we have DAOs in the in the repository already. We have so many features that I don't think people realize in the Phantasma repository because Phantasma is kind of like a Swiss Army knife of blockchains. There's it's feature it's so feature rich. When you're trying to talk about Phantasma and they ask you, like, what's your USP? What's your U unique selling point? Of course, we have smart NFTs, which are amazing technology and yeah. amazing because, you know, the, the, the forethought of Sergio uh, Flores, our founder, to start building this in 2018 before dynamic NFTs were a thing, before you know, gaming in 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 blockchain or the ba maybe, you know, there's gamified smart contracts, but not actual real games like putting in the, the, the ability to like deeply integrate the NFTs into your game and, and all these kind of stuff. So amazing. But when you start talking about Phantasma, there's so many selling points to this chain that I don't think enough people realize. And I, I really look forward to as we go forward. Uh, to be able to showcase those more. And we have timed NFTs. We can infuse liquidity into NFTs. There is not a, any other blockchain that can do that. You can do some sort of representative type of infusion, but you cannot, to my knowledge, directly infuse a token into an NFT other than Phantasma. We have... And not only, not only a token, you can infuse it with uh, another smart NFT. Yes, and of course, another smart right. NFT. and another yeah. one, and another one, and another one. So, yes, you yeah. can have infinitely nestable NFTs. So what I want to see is an NFT project, like a PFP utility project come and have mm -hmm. sort of their main, you know, RNG, like you get this head or whatever it might be. But I would like to see all of the traits themselves also be NFTs that get nested underneath. So now you have a whole new meta that you can create where you're not just, tr you're not just swapping on secondary markets for, let's say the most rare overall PFP, but now you can start swapping rare traits instead and build your own really cool PFP that, that you've, you know, that you've kind of like slotted together with all the cool features that you want, right? It can add a whole Wait. new meta to to the yeah. to the uh to the nft pfp game and the, the ability to up 
update the art uh, seamlessly in real time um, is just is truly amazing. There's so many awesome things you can do. And guess what, folks at home? Tech, do you know how much it costs to mint 5,000 NFTs on this chain? Clearly, you probably do, but... Yeah, <laughs> I have a clue, but you can tell them. <laughs> One dollar! One dollar! One dollar USD! 5, it's insane. It's insanity. It's crazy. We're giving them away. I will pay I, the first five NFT projects that come to me with a good idea. I'll pay for your mint. <laughs> I'll, I'll pay. I'll pay for your mint, everybody. <laughs> I'll pay five dollars for five NFT projects. I'll do it. By golly, <laughs> but that's the coolest thing. This is a great chain to come and experiment on because of the low cost to actually launch contracts and and to perform transactions. And you know, it's got all the features. It has. Low cost, high transaction fees. It slices, it dices, it blends. Like it does it all. It's yeah. Phantasm is awesome, isn't it? Yeah, Phantasm is awesome. Not only the technology, but all the ecosystem. And people don't scratch the surface of what we do have because we do mm -hmm. have a lot. And, uh, and there's a lot more to come. Like, for example, we do have a friendship contract that no one knows about that could be used in games for adding like a steam like friendship uh that you have your okay. friends on yeah mm -hmm. they're just small things that no one knows about and the other thing is the decks i know people are excited about yes. it and i think we will i don't know when we want to talk about it because i really let's talk am about it anxious baby. To... okay let's do it talk okay so it. <laughs> so uh <laughs> continuing your uh your talk about nfts and smart nfts i will mm -hmm. tell everyone that smart nfts are one of the key features of our decks smart nfts are being used to store uh your your position it's not your position but it's the nft position on the pool for example the liquidity that you provided will be stored on the smart nft uh the smart nft as everyone knows as have two parts the rom the static information that will represent, for example, the uh, the symbol and the other symbol, the two symbols of the pool. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that we will have, the, the RAM, that's the changeable part, will have the amounts that you provided. Uh, not, uh, it, will, it won't dynamically update the amounts, only if you remove or add to the, to the amount. But one, one that is kind of not static, but it's your value is the um, liquidity liquidity uh, calculation. We have a special calculation uh, that will show you like your liquidity. And from that liquidity, we can calculate the amount that you provided from both symbols. Yeah, it's math, pure math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, good. we need that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 and we will be using that for, for example, the claimed fees and the fees that you earn. Um, and why we chose the smart NFTs is that you can send that position on the pool and send to another address and claim the fees from that address. Uh, you can burn the NFT and, we'll, and you will remove basically your position and you will mm -hmm. receive mm -hmm. all of the, the amount, not the amount that you put in, but the amount that you are eligible, basically uh, the yeah. calculation based on on the the liquidity that you provided and you currently yes. have on the NFT. So yeah, a lot. Um, yeah. And I'm really excited about that because we are uh, not starting. But that represents, but sorry to interrupt you, that kind of represents true ownership of, of your liquidity position, right? with the yeah. nft that's that's true ownership it's not oh here's a visual representation on a ui and this is stuck in a smart contract that you don't control no this no, is no, like no, no. this is like my liquidity is in this nft which i own in this wallet exactly. right is that right exactly. that is awesome that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> yeah that is and just letting everyone know that uh the the decks is starting to ramp up the development. Uh, we are we have 
have been off for a while, basically, but we are getting there and we are starting the tests on testnet. Not everyone has access to the, the backbone of it. And mm -hmm. because we are still, still uh, making upgrades to the UI and making it better. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you have the knowledge to call smart contracts and if you dig deep, you'll be able to test it on the test net because Ooh. we enabled it. Yeah. A challenge uh, and, for all you yeah, and, smarty pants uh, out there. <laughs> Text and issue in you the a future. challenge. <laughs> Find the decks. <laughs> and hopefully in the future, uh, not a long future, like um, I'm thinking, I don't want to give times, but yeah. hopefully in Two weeks, uh, we will show the what we have been working on. Not only the decks, but the other projects that we were working on. Um, for example, the Phantasma voting, the Phantasma contract tester that will allow you to deploy smart contracts, do airdrops, uh, mass minting. I'm thinking about that one because that, that is a really hard feature to make but uh yeah if yeah. it's really requested maybe we'll add it to the be, i to think the it'd be a good idea thing. yeah yeah we want those nft projects rolling in so is this like a, a the, the contract tester is it something that i mean is it strictly something for testnet that requires a lot of or no manager? no no all right this is is this like a low code is this like a low code uh sort of I, feature for people to come in and use yeah, I basically call it a contract tester uh, because it was the first uh, thing that it it was supposed to do, like yeah. testing smart contracts. Uh, mm -hmm. You can do it on uh, mainnet. You can use it on mainnet, call smart contracts, interact with them, do every kind of stuff that you want because the, the UI allows you. It just, you select, for example, you select which network you want to, to query the data from. For mm -hmm. example, select testnet, and then you select the smart contract. Once you select the smart contract, you have another tab that you'll select which method that you want to use. Uh, it will appear uh, some boxes to, to fill in, like the, mm -hmm. the parameters of the, that method. And then okay. you so just execute the call. Like like interacting with a contract on Etherscan. Yeah, it's it's a visual thing to interact with with smart contracts, basically. Cool. And yeah, great. We'll have a lot more features, like the airdrop function, uh, the um, the transaction, like getting the transaction data decoded and sending tokens. Mm -hmm. A lot of a lot of other features that will be there. It's not just a contract tester. It's a future. Future rich uh, tool, like right. Uh, oh, and and you will be able to deploy your smart contract from there. That's a really huge feature. Excellent. Uh, using yeah. a UI to deploy your smart contract. Now that's cool. That's cool. So, because it's always good to have anything that's really accessible. So, if there's like a, a way to do a, uh, yeah, to, to deploy in, a, in in just an easy and and yeah. Refined manner, yeah, yeah, for people that want to, you know, uh, deploy simple token contracts or, or things like that. And, and yeah, it's going to be man, so exciting, friend. Okay, I know you had some stuff that you wanted to show off, so can, you, are you ready for that? I think I am. Let's go. Okay, oh, oh, wait, there's there's one other thing I want to talk about before we do that, yeah, yeah, for, for, for next steps. So, we've got the outbound connections going. People are asking oh, right. what's what's happening with the stuck the stuck transactions. That is going to be high on the priority list, right? It is. It is. Uh, actually, we discussed it today. Uh, me and uh, Sergio, mm -hmm. we were discussing it and how we are going to attack it. Um, we will bring. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't want to tell it here. Uh, but uh, we yeah. were trying to bring the swaps not in the way that we used to have but we will like uh not rim rim basically don't hold our token holders hostage of uh the swaps like uh, mm -hmm. our holders our token holders are a really huge priority for us and what happened uh like 
making making uh, the older uh, funds uh, inaccessible for a long period of time that won't happen again because we made sure uh, in terms of cold wise and in terms of uh, ethos basically we don't want that again ever again right yeah. so there's no more there's no more on off switch to the chain is what you're saying yeah yeah basically. we cannot we, we will not ever be able to halt the chain again no no yeah. and and we and we really uh take security seriously we are, are always and continuously uh making announcements and uh improvements to security and that's our real like right now is our real motto because uh the past things that happened like one year ago uh it really made us stronger uh and focusing on the right stuff to prevent any hopefully i really i really say hopefully because we try to do our best job and do course, uh, do our course. job and do the of best course. that we can to yeah. mitigate any any possible weird scenario yeah so yeah yeah that's good okay are you ready to show off uh some of the stuff you wanted to, to preview yeah hopefully let's <laughs> let's see if, if this goes Okay, oh, well, all right. Let's, let's check it out. I'm going to add this to the stream. What okay. do we see here, sir? Okay, this is basically the Phantasma voting platform that I kind of teased on the Telegram channel. Uh, mm -hmm. You, I, I don't know, it's a lot of information because people are not uh, used <laughs> to this platform, but people will mm -hmm. get used because this will be one of our primary uh, tools for everyone for our every token holder to uh, make the vote on the future of the chain so i will start i think i will start with the voting uh just because it's the first one on the list okay um as you can see uh, here is the test net you can choose which network you want to use this is getting the data from the chain when it's the next inflation when it's the next soul master as well so you click i will change it here as well so here you'll see two boxes uh, one for creating a poll and one for selecting uh, existing uh, existing one okay so you select the poll you can type the subject basically the subject is what will appear here mm -hmm. you select which organization is able to vote on mm -hmm. on the subject uh masters takers phantasma force phantom force sorry Exchange pot and other organizations that can be created will be able will be automatically added to the list. This is awesome. fetching from yeah. This is fetching from the chain is all chain data. If I create right, um, right now, if I if I if I created um, a DAO, it will automatically appear here. Nice, just letting nice. everyone know. Yeah. So yeah, this yeah. this really takes out like a, a huge. Uh, barrier like if you want to create a doubt really all you've got to do is spit up the contract because you'll have this nice this front end ui for the voting part it's going to automatically yeah no no you you don't need to go create there. any smart contract i will i will get there or for the doubt i'm just saying if you if you start a dow you know this this part it's going to you're going to be able to use this voting platform yeah right in anybody course. right yeah so it's it's something that um, it's just there for you to use already and kind of reduces. Uh oh, did I? Am I still there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can I hear you. I can my hear camera. You. My camera just, I, I, think I, I think I, I think I wiggled a cord and something happened. <laughs> go <laughs> ahead, go ahead, go ahead and, and, and keep it. Oh, here, here I am again. I think. Okay, go okay. Ahead I'll, I'll, I'm going to work keep... on this real fast. Okay. No problem. No problem. All right. Okay. So here we have uh, the consensus mode. We have types of consensus unanimity majority popularity and ranking so this will uh be what you want to to create your poll on the the consensus mode and once reached uh it will it will have the consensus i will show the polls uh later just one second why we have choices per user why why do we have this because Let's say that you have a poll created and you have options like uh, we have like four options, uh, one, two and three. And you want to vote like 50 percent of your vote will go to option zero and uh, the other 50, 
the other 50% that's left, you vote 30% on the second option and 20% on the last option. So 100% of your vote will be uh, split depending on the votes that you are allowed to, allowed to do. Uh, the, it will be split, the percentage. So one vote doesn't represent actually one vote. It represents 100% of your vote if you, if you choose one. If you choose two, right. it will represent like 50-50 or 7-30. It depends, right? You, you are able to distribute your 100% to the votes depending on the number of choices that you are allowed to, to make. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. It's an amazing feature. <laughs> it is an amazing um, so, feature. Okay. I will show, for example, the Nexus protocol version. This is one of the, <laughs> the consensus polls that were created to... To, to upgrade the, the blockchain. Okay, it was it has consensus. It was the system protocol. Organization was the validators. Majority, one vote. It started, it ended, and the votes were on the 12th version. Okay, and the, the number of votes. Uh, and uh, if this wasn't finished, you'll be able to vote. You could select it, and then it will appear the vote. Nice. You will need to sign with your transaction. Yeah. Okay, let's Beautiful, go to the man. next stop. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, I just want, I, I don't just mean to wanna... cut it. I don't mean to cut in. We've got about 10 minutes before we have to get yeah, on yeah, yeah. a call with a future Phantasma tech partner. So <laughs> I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will be really quick. The, uh, the okay. multi signature, uh, as we talked earlier, uh, here's a, just a, an example you will create with a subject that will be searched. Uh, and nice. you need to set an expiration date, the nexus, the chain, the payload, and the transaction script will be created on the Phantasma. Uh, one of those, uh, almost all of those will be created on the Phantasma uh, contract tester that will allow you to export the script that you created to, to a byte, uh, an hexadecimal way of, uh, of the representation and you'll paste it here at uh, the address that need to sign this multi-signature and send it to the chain. The other people that are not you will need to search the subject and just sign it and send it to the chain. The last one uh, of the people that uh, do this will sign and send the transaction directly to the chain to execute it. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's go to the DAOs. Okay. Okay. God, I love yeah. this. This is all like in one, one handy, like all yeah. in one. Oh, it's beautiful, man. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. So you can, you can visualize the DAOs. I will just visualize the, the validators, just show you the example. Okay. Here you can see the balances, everything related to Phantom Force. As well, uh, if you click here, you will go to the Explorer, to the wallet. Yeah, it's a nice, nice feature to to have. Yes, uh, masters. Let's let's see. Let's see the masters. We have a lot of uh, people. Um, like Big shout out to our soul to masters. <laughs> yeah, <Sorry>. yeah. <laughs> this is on the test net. It's almost as yeah. equal as mainnet, but uh, outdated because yeah of the, the mainnet integration with KuCoin and Get.io. Yeah. yeah. So here you will be able to create your DAO, uh, test DAO, test DAO. And if you want to have a custom script that will run once the DAO uses uh, any type of uh, call, like mm -hmm. with a multi-signature, it mm -hmm. will, for example, if you receive a transaction, you can add that when receiving a transaction, it will trigger some special function that will automatically, for example, uh, distribute the funds to all of the DAO members, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, just a <laughs> small example. Yeah. So when you uh, said you don't need a contract to start a DAO, this is what you're talking about right here. Yeah, I can yeah, create the DAO. I don't know this if I have amazing. a the funds on testnet but i am able yeah, to do a, it that's okay and then and then you can add any of your custom logic here below that that needs to happen right as far yeah. as like right okay 
beautiful i will get i will get into more detail once i do the tutorial series because yeah uh, this is really a powerful tool that uh hopefully people will really use it because it will allow allow you to customize your DAO as much as you want so that's yeah. amazing um yeah i think for for now i think the phantasma voting is uh it's almost there, actually. Just uh, cleaning some stuff, making it even prettier, and mm -hmm. hopefully mm -hmm. we'll get there as soon as possible. Because so it's cool. a highly requested feature that no one knows about it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's part of the, that's part of the quest, right? Unfortunately, we had to kind of pause where we were in our ecosystem growth, but. You know, at the end of the day, what this exploit and this whole process that we've had to go through uh, over the last year, what it actually did was it wasn't enough just to, to fix the problem. What we what we chose to do it was let it catalyze us to upgrade this chain, to add so many great features that we'll be talking about and, and, and discussing and doing tutorials over here the next few months. And it's just where we are now as a blockchain is amazing. All the, all the built-in features is just, it's, it's so fantastic. And it excites me to no end to think about where this ecosystem is going to be a year from now, you know, when, when, when we're fully fleshed out and we've got DeFi projects and NFT projects and games, and entertainment projects, and just all the good, all the goodness going on. It's, Truly an exciting time to be in this uh, part of this feature-rich and forward-thinking blockchain. Yeah, without a doubt. Like, it's really, we really made a huge progress and we really want to make sure that we have the right tools to, to the newcomers, to the new developers and to the old developers that develop on-chain to mm -hmm. provide them with the right tools to interact with the stuff they that they are developing, interact with the things that they weren't able to do it without a lot of knowledge on, on the chain. And it will really speed up any project that wants to come in and wants to to use our amazing blockchain because it yeah. is. It is. It is. It absolutely is. So yeah, lowering the barrier to entry for new developers to come in or even, you know, hopefully in the future, we'll get some some low code environments going so that people like me who don't know, um, you know, the last thing I coded was Hello World in basic in, in like third grade Jeez. or something like that. So, you know, hopefully there's something for dum dums like me to come in and be able to fire something up with relative ease. And that's really exciting. We want to make this, you know. That the whole ethos of Phantasma is, you know, an open source, like, you know, for the people environment. And we're doing everything we can to really bring that to fruition and make that a reality. So and really thanks to you, uh, Tech, and all the other developers on the team. We really appreciate it. Any final thoughts or closing words before we sign off here on this uh, amazing state of the chain address? Yeah, of course. I think I, I really want to say I want to thank every token holder. I know that was been a really rough situation for the past year and uh, a lot of stuff happened. Not good, not bad, but a lot of stuff happened. But uh, And thank God we finally have mainnet integration. Uh, a lot of partnerships are starting to flourish and we will get a lot of new things coming and uh if a developer is watching uh if you have the right cv please uh, send please send to us and we will assess and we'll maybe we'll interview you and you will be part of the team hopefully <laughs> yeah, um, yeah and and if you want to develop your own app of course just do it contact us and let's let's do this together and let's improve this ecosystem and Bring, in, bring it to a whole new level and make Phantasma like, great because it deserves it. Absolutely. All right, my friend. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us on this uh, first State of the Chain address for 2023. 
Uh, I hope that you're as excited as we are. Uh, those were some great alpha drops. I, I know the yeah. community's going to be super pumped after uh, seeing this and seeing all the stuff that we've been doing. So just so cool, man. So thanks again, everyone. We're going to sign out. We'll give you a little taste. Thank you, of this. everyone. Yeah, thank you so much, and we'll, we'll see you next time.